In the meantime, I'm pleased to say that we can get immediate reaction from David Bonson, founder of the Bonson Group. David, great to have you. I mean, there were a lot of questions, trade deficits, uh, child care, economic sanctions. What stood out to you in terms of what you really learned? What was new as an economist and a market participant today? I think that it's the most uh, serious he sounded about de about uh, tariffs in some time mm -hmm. where a lot of the language in this new campaign has focused around tariffs as a bargaining chip. So, you know, in the past, he would say, I'd like to have no tariffs. If the other countries will do what we want, then we'd go to no tariffs. And now he's talking about tariffs as a means of raising revenue. And I will candidly say that concerns me a great deal. Um, there's certainly a number of other areas that sounds like the uh, deregulatory, pro-energy, uh, more supply side oriented president that we saw in his 2016 to 2020 term. But there were other areas that I was a little unclear about. David, the things that struck me about what he was talking about, um, the energy policy, we've talked a lot about how you lower prices of everyday goods and services through energy. He explained that to the American public. He also talked about the extension of tax cuts, and he laid out a solid plan for boosting manufacturing in this country, which is something that Joe Biden promised us and did not deliver on. So ultimately, I think when you're looking at his broader plan, um, you know, some sort of from a thousand feet above, it seems like he's got a structure in place. And yet we have nothing from Kamala Harris. Well, I agree that uh, Kamala Harris's campaign has very purposely been devoid of any specifics. It's a strategy. Uh, I don't think it's going to change. And where there has been specifics from the Harris campaign, they've been really quite concerning, focused on price controls and government subsidies. Um, energy has always been a strong suit of President Trump. I think that he does intuitively understand you need more production to drive prices lower, and it's a growth opportunity to drive uh, not only jobs, but good paying jobs. Uh, there's geopolitical advantages as well for U.S. having greater uh, energy independence. So I agree that was definitely one of the stronger spots. There is still plenty of room for specificity from the Trump campaign as well, but we got a lot more information today than we've gotten from the Harris campaign. You know, David, one of the things I heard Trump talk about today that I don't think I've heard before is the idea of creating a sovereign wealth fund. I think that would be funded, in his view, by these tariff revenues. And I always thought if we did tariffs, that would bring down my income tax rate, and that's how it would even out. But I guess it's going to go to a sovereign wealth fund. Um, what do you make of that? Well, if a family has $35 trillion on their credit card, should they set up a separate savings account? Hmm. Um, I don't have any idea what he's talking about. But I think what the impulse is, Brian, if I'm being fair to him, is he doesn't like that there are other countries that run into surplus and have foreign exchange reserves and they're able to run a sovereign wealth fund because they have dollars they have to buy assets with. The reason the U.S. doesn't is because we're a debtor nation. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we borrow from other countries because we spend above our means. You can't have a sovereign wealth fund if you have $35 trillion of national debt. Interesting. Well said. Um, you know, David, it was also interesting that we got a lot of comments from him on tariffs. And economists have said that his tariff plan feels inflationary because it's so protectionist. But his response to that is smart tariffs don't create inflation. Smart tariffs um, can be used to negotiate, right? Used as a negotiating tool. Um, how are you thinking about tariffs, the American consumer who sits at home, who feels that and thinks that maybe the price of their goods are going up, or if indeed it is a negotiating tool and we can grow our way out from having to use those tariffs? Well, so that's the problem, Taylor, is that you can't have it both ways. He can't say on one hand it's going to raise a lot of revenue and it's going to fund a sovereign wealth fund, and on the other hand say it's a negotiating mm -hmm. tactic. Because if it's a negotiating tactic that then doesn't have to happen, then it doesn't raise revenue. But if it does raise revenue, it did raise it from American consumers. That's who pays the price of the tariff is the importers of these foreign manufactured goods. And so there may be some who say, well, that's fine. I don't care. But they can't say it doesn't pass on cost to the American consumer. Um, if tariffs are a negotiating tactic, 
I have my own view as to how effective they would be. But if they are that, then they're not a revenue raiser. So we can't really have it both ways. David Bonson, thank you for your time and your immediate reaction to that Mm. speech that we just heard. We really appreciate you jumping on with us. Thanks so much, Taylor.